what I was afraid of. Wabakimi, here at last. I'm starting out a solo trip in this enormous wilderness area, second largest park in Ontario, and on the first lake of the trip, I'm reminded of what a special place this is. Pictographs, left here by Wabakimi's original paddlers. What a magical way to start this trip, and I'm sure it's just the first of many beautiful sights on this route. But all trips have their challenges too, and this one's getting things started with a pretty severe headwind. Checked weather on the SATCOM, and it's not getting better anytime soon, so just in a kneeling position now, I'm gonna plow through it. Just gonna take some hard paddling. I hope to get a few more portages done today, but the wind uh, had other plans, but looks like it's all worked out beautifully because there's some campsites in this area and it looks beautiful. What a great camp to start this trip off. Cliffs, there's a waterfall down there for tomorrow morning. It's time for dinner, I'm ready to stop here. This is perfect. Is this some magic or what? Wabakimi, the Wabakimi welcome. Buns done up, mustard, red onion, toasted them a little. A little scotch. Got some tough portages coming up. Gotta lighten the load. So where in the world is Wabakimi? Well, there's Toronto, Ottawa, New York, Chicago, Minneapolis. It's up here, right next up to Lake Nipigon there, Lake Superior, way up in Northern Ontario. This is my route, I started there today and carried up a little bit here on the Kopka River, did what I could with the headwinds. And my route goes up here into sort of the heart of the park, lower Wabakimi Lake, and then back out here where my outfit, my shuttle, uh, Wabakimi Outfitters, they will pick me up. 10.01, just got everything done in time. It's supposed to be perfectly clear tonight, no tarp. Very chilly this morning. Hopefully that'll help knock down the bugs. Good portaging weather too. That feels nice.
We've got five portages this morning to get to the next lake through some waterfalls here on the Kopka River. But it should be some beautiful, beautiful country. Awkward. Just took the barrel up the steepest section first. Got two weeks worth of food in there, so it's pretty heavy. This canoe weighs just over 50 pounds. It's not too bad on its own. But the barrel, it's a lot on terrain like this. Beautiful gorge here. one down for the day and there's actually an alternate portage for that one on the north side of the river and it uses a rope to slide your gear down it's steeper but then yeah you got to harness up to the rope and whatnot There's a campsite right behind me and I hoped yesterday to get at least here. This would have been a spectacular site, but so was mine. I can't complain, but this section of the river is like a little lake. It's absolutely paradise. One of the most beautiful places I've ever been and I haven't even gotten to the highlight yet, which is a nice waterfall right around the corner. Incredible. I love this place so much. Got my maps here. I won't show them in detail because my outfitter provided them to me, Wabakimi Outfitters. Bruce, thank you so much for putting me onto this route. Just looking for my portage here. Portages are not marked in Wabakimi, though technically I'm in Kopka River Provincial Park still. But it seems to be the same case here. I'm sure it's around. Trails have been good. Ladder. That's a first for me on a portage. Okay. Two down.
place is unbelievable. This area is gorgeous but hard earned and I'm making a point of getting it done today, get through these waterfalls because these portages are strenuous today. Tomorrow with heavy rain they can be dangerous following two days of thunderstorms too so it's a good time to get this done. One awkward takeout. Finally through what could be the toughest portaging section of the trip. It was gorgeous, but I'm excited to have a long lake to, to paddle on now and fish. I haven't even wet a line yet. It's just been too strenuous yesterday and today. So have a nice chill paddle here. Saw a little butterfly here in this water. Uh, I think it's dead. Anyway, that caught my eye and I looked right at this. Awesome. Big moose shed. This is, it's always shocking how heavy these are. Such strong animals. Look at that. Let's put it out here and mark the trailhead with this. Hydrated some veggie curry and rice to go. I'd like to get going and uh, get to camp as soon as possible at the next lake. I'm gonna set up camp. I'm overdue for a good sleep. I'm feeling it. This is the fourth or fifth time the rod has dipped back and the only one that's actually gotten a hook. Hmm. Decent pike. Barbless single octopus hook. Pops right out. Hands wet. One around the base of the tail. Support the belly. Not a bad pike. Long enough, not too thick, but there you go. Thanks, buddy. That's it for the Kopka. What an introduction to this river. It's stunning. On to an unnamed lake where I'll hopefully set up camp. So Bruce put me onto this connection between Kopka and Wabakimi. And I have no idea how traveled it is. There's a well-defined trail here. It's growing in a bit, but it's pretty good. Seemed like to be a buggy portage, and it was. Whew. Nice little spot for the night on this random lake, pretty little lake. Got good water access here for hauling the canoe up. That's one of the main things I look for. In the, in the hammock I can hang just about anywhere. I don't need a flat spot so really I just want somewhere convenient to get the canoe in and out. This is great. Time for dinner. I am famished.
the outfitter said the bugs are pretty bad right now. It's a real cocktail. Peak black flies and mosquitoes are expected. There are also a ton of noceums, very, very tiny, like pinprick size, biting insects, not to mention horse flies and deer flies in the afternoon. I'm heading into my bug sanctuary. And it's supposed to be rain tomorrow morning, so I have the green light to sleep in. Be much needed. I can't believe it's only camp number two. That's actually blowing my mind. What a relief to be in here. I'm thinking about moose and all the other animals out there that have no bug mesh. What, what a form of torture. I can't imagine what that's like. The agony just... I have, I have countless bug bites, but I can only imagine... Like this pales in comparison to what they would get in a day. The moose also don't have antihistamines. Oh. up dry this morning. Attempting to pack up. There's I'm right on the edge of this, this thunderstorm booming all around. So I think I'm probably best to stay off the water for a little bit. I'm gonna wait it out, read in the hammock and the safety of the bug mesh, and just rest up a little bit after the last two days. Here it comes. Wow, it sounded like a gun was just shot over there. I just got a message from Lindsay at Wild Bikini Outfitters on the Zolio, my SATCOM device. She said, severe thunderstorm warning this morning, wind gusts up to 70 kilometers an hour, comma hail and heavy rain possible. Stay safe, LD. Wow, I love thunderstorms, but that could be pushing it. Hopefully this doesn't get too bad. Storm seems to have passed. I'm gonna cook up dinner and get on my way. I'm gonna get to Boulder Lake today. I always keep a little cache of bir birch bark in my food barrel. Just for these occasions where it's wet and there's no birch around, just makes it so much easier. Collected the driest tinder I could from under some big trees. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Please refer to me only as Papa John from now on, or John Terrio. Thank you. Oh yeah. I'm in my all beiges. Hat too. Two o'clock, heading for Boulder Lake, just a couple portages away. So this little hoodie with the integrated bug mesh has been doing a good job, but there's no way I'm doing a nearly kilometer long portage with the sun starting to come out with two shirts on. I'll just be sweating buckets. Our friend Byrne in Texas sent us this. It's a head net that he modified with this patch on top and that stretches it out. I think it's an outdoor research head net, but uh, yeah, he modified it so it could have that patch on top to fit my wide brimmed hat. And then it's got two straps coming from around the back. They go through a little loop on the front. Anyway, it keeps most of the bugs off my face, ears, eyes, nose, which is 
half the battle right there. They're not flying directly into your orifices. Oh, that's nice and cold. You got hot now that the sun's out. Really humid. Another small lake, short paddle here, and then a shorter portage into Boulder Lake, and then it could stop there. I'm trying to sneak around a short portage with the rain. It seems like this stream is, you know, enough to float the canoe. Not with me in it, but. Boulder Lake is turning out to be a beauty. Got a fish on here right as I start, and it's just very scenic. That's why. Oh man, it'd be such a nice eater. The problem is, I really don't want to clean a fish in the swarm of bugs. So, it's a tough call. Ooh, be good though. Bugs aren't bad right now. I'm ready to set up camp. I'm gonna risk it. I just dispatched the fish. This nice walleye I'll show you in a sec once it's fully dead by cutting its gills and then it bleeds out very, rather, rather quickly. I didn't have a bonk and stick handy and I wanted to do it as quickly as possible. Perfect eater. And this is going to be delicious. Thank you. From a humane perspective, I do prefer bonking. It's just what I would what I would want. Would you rather have someone slit your throat and bleed out, or just bonk you over the head and lights out? Beautiful in here. Got camp for the night. So far, no bugs. Maybe I can clean this fish in peace. Terrific sight on this huge slab of rock. I think I'll jump in the water. Oh. 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 Huge wolf spider here. Oh. oh, that's refreshing. Oh man. Ah. While I do the cheeks first, so I don't forget them. Bugs found me, but it's going to be worth it. Ooh, baby. And at the end, I'll grab its pectoral fins as well. Make walleye wings. Got this already before I did that, before I cleaned the fish. Got a tarp up too, just in case, because there are some threatening clouds. And sure enough, it did shower very briefly, but it passed. great to slow down for the evening and soak it all in. A few days in, with many portages behind, that's when I begin to truly be here. I'm alone on this lake with wilderness for miles in all directions. No distractions. Little things start to pop. It's the beauty of solitude.
before. It's supposed to be 35 degrees Celsius today. That is hot. So I'm going to be trying to make a, an earlier ending to today. I'm up at sunrise. And I got one 700 meter portage and then travel on two fairly large lakes. So that'd be nice. Something feisty on. Bad start to today. Thanks, buddy. Cute. Beautiful paddle here in Boulder Lake. We're at the first portage of the day, 700 meters at least, potentially more, depending on the water level and the creek you put in on. So, glad to be here early while it's still cool. 35 degree heat with the bugs, this would be insane. The heat might taper off the bugs, but can't guarantee that. Whew. Glad to be done that. Got pretty buggy. Stopped here on Shawanabis Lake for breakfast. I skipped it just to get that portage done while it was cool. Make up a big, big brunch now. Well, this is what happens when you skip breakfast. Your eyes get bigger than your stomach and you make an enormous feast. And I already ate half of the hash browns too. Had a craving for burger and fries. And I realized I could pretty much make that. You know, I've got these black bean uh, mix, like you can make it into patties like this. Mustard, ketchup, red onion, fried red onion on there, and hash browns for my fries. This will see me through to lunch, to dinner for sure. Mmm, that is good. I've even got a pop. This is electrolyte tabs, and we've got a citrus flavor, so it's almost like a Sprite or something. Mmm. What a meal. Back on my way, I've got at least eight kilometers of paddling here. So I took this to go. It's way too much food for one meal. I feel good. Bugs have let up. Maybe it's the heat or the breeze, but anyway, this is really nice. One short portage brings me into Onomaukawash Lake. I'm officially in Wabakami Provincial Park. Probably gonna stay on this lake tonight because it is too hot for portaging. It's a scorcher. Just got off the water. I'm gonna set up camp now. It's so it's so hot, like can't do anything. Nice open woods to camp in here. About to start the Lookout River tomorrow morning. And that's all I have in me today. It's about five o'clock, so that's fine. It wasn't that early. Still five hours of daylight. It's bright till 10 right now, but it's too hot to do anything with it. Just gonna rest up. I brought the ultra light version of the drummer, and I'm really glad because not only is it lighter from the on these portages, but Material's super thin and air blows through it. That's the only thing keeping me alive right now. I just checked the weather on the Zolio and it is 40 degrees with a feels like temperature with humidity. Whew. Not gonna risk an open fire in these dry, hot conditions. So got out the stick stove to kind of contain my transient burner. Wind block with the canoe and sigh. Thank you so much. 
for this fuel bottle. Perfect. It's a little fuel bottle for my methyl hydrate. Non-drip too. Very convenient. Because methyl hydrate, I have been told, can be absorbed through the skin and it's toxic. So, not something you want to be spilling all over yourself. There we go. Uh, instant potatoes in there, my ghee, clarified butter, is liquid right now in this heat. It's always pretty satisfying. I don't have a big appetite today with the heat. Ooh, really hits the spot. Big bangs of thunder over there where I saw some big thunderheads. Probably more of that tonight, maybe tomorrow. Let's see if my stomach can handle some scotch. Somebody's got to work this down. Oh. Yeah, on a dehydrated stomach, that's kind of harsh. Something's ripping through. It's a little scary, the gusts are pretty intense. Just picture a tree coming down. Rocking this whole hammock. Packing up here on day five, and that was some intense weather last night. Bruce sent me a message on the SATCOM and said today could be pretty ugly. <clears throat> Tuesday, severe thunderstorms, perhaps strong wind gusts of 90 to 110 kilometers an hour, nickel to quarter sized hail, locally heavy downpours, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's 38 Celsius or something like that. That's pretty intense weather. So, we'll see how today goes. Luckily, I'm on the Lookout River today, not on big lakes. That helps a bit. First coffee in three days on account of thunderstorms, bugs, and heat. Eating up the last of the garlic toast, green onion, and the first bag of shredded cheese. It's the first thing that would go in this heat, so. Feels like it's going to be a pretty good day. I'm brimming with excitement. Another pun. Well, I see the summer solstice has you in a chipper mood. It's my sunny disposition. Okay, I, I've been meaning to, to talk to you about this. The puns have to stop. You just speak in puns. Just speak normally. You're like a dark cloud on an otherwise sunny day. Okay, you know what, if that's how you're going to be, maybe we should just trip separately. Fine. I didn't mean that. I need you. It's so sunny. Graceful as a swan, I know. I'm trying to stretch out the lower back. This one's called the cat cow. I'll show you how to do it. So where in the world is the Lookout River? I'd never heard of it before coming into this trip. I'm right there, about to head up this way towards Smooth Rock Lake, big one there. And then I'll be working to Lower Wabakimi, back to Smooth Rock and down to Caribou Lake. I'm definitely behind schedule, but not for lack of trying, just the conditions have uh, prevented big days, so hopefully I'll get good days at some point and I'll make it all back up. Take out for the first portage. Look like it might be a runnable rapid though, it looked pretty easy, so I'm gonna have a scout. There's a big sweeper at the end. There's two trees hanging over the river, but that should be easily avoided. Come down river left. Looks straightforward, I'm gonna go for it. Looks very straightforward, but as I learned on the Pakistan with Xander, any moving water needs respect.
15 minutes ago there was a lot of blue sky and it has gotten very dark since then. A couple of walleyes here. Thank you. Keeping an eye on the sky. Based on what Bruce told me, that's scary stuff and that could roll in pretty fast. Coming up to Sunrise Falls, first of a number of falls on the Lookout River, en route to Smooth Rock Lake. So I, I hooked a walleye, oh, a huge pike had it in its jaws, oh, poor walleye, look at that, oh, you poor thing, okay. you go? thank you, good luck in there, wow, it is a dog eat dog world down there, holy cow, that was a huge pike, I was hoping I could net it, it was right there, oh, but the pike let go at the last second. Wow. I was wondering what that was because it felt heavy but it wasn't fighting like a big fight a big fish would. While I watch my hands in case uh, jaws comes back. Another walleye. Pretty nice. Let's get you rescued from jaws, man. I had some old scars on him too, on his side, similar to the, that last one, probably the same thing. Hard to leave, but I gotta move on. I'll troll still until I get to the next falls. There are gonna be a lot more spots like this en route, so There's plenty more opportunity to get into a pike like that. I started to consolidate my tackle down to one tray, so I can just slip it in my backpack and don't have to bring an extra little case for it. On this trip for walleye and pike mostly, I brought spoons, some inline spinners, won't use those too much though. Crankbaits, deep and shallow, another one, deep one over here. This floating swim bait, which is great when they're, it's shallow or submerged weeds that I, and I can't troll anything else. And then lots of soft plastic swim baits, a tube jig, that's about it. Some odds and ends in here, like an extra lighter extra crankbait snaps, some steel wire just in case I need it for something, you never know what it could come in handy for. That's it. And my pliers, long nose pliers for pike, very important. Thank you. Some pretty fresh flow down here, maybe even from last night. Just ran into a group of six guys on this portage and they had lost their fishing lures. They're in day seven of their trip and they lost their lures. So I gave them a few to keep them going. Four portages in a row, so I'm just gonna hammer hammer these out. This one can be run. Much more a falls than a rapid than a falls. It's pretty easy. I like to stay on river right, and the last one could have been run river left as well. 
But it was such an easy and short portage, it wasn't worth the scout. Just had my line in the water hanging over the boat while I got ready. <laughs> and walleye, nice walleye. Slams it. Stopped for a late lunch, early dinner, and some geese nested right beside this fire pit. Tons of down there. I was contemplating stopping here on Spring Lake. It's very nice. But if I get into smooth rock today, it'll save me paddling into a nasty headwind tomorrow. So, seems like the play. And I'll pull back. And I'll add a piece of non to that. The Simpsons. <laughs> Been looking around for the next portage into Smooth Rock Lake, one of the biggest in the park. And this is a longer portage, over a kilometer. It's called the Fantasia Portage. It's supposed to be old moss and nice stands of spruce. But I think I read that it burnt at some point, so we'll see. Here's the section that burned, but it's still beautiful and clear. Of all the portages of a kilometer or longer that I've done, this has to be the nicest. End of the Lookout River, onto Smooth Rock Lake. I'm at the very bottom of it, paddle a few kilometers and find the camp. Ugly crosswind here. <laughs> Big whirlpool there. Holy. Some shockingly sizable whirlpools here. I think the water is really high. A lot of the shoreline vegetation is underwater. Islands are half underwater. It's late June, but I've heard that this area still has really high water. So a lot of water pumping through here, I guess. So that's the end of the river. Now I'm in smooth rock. eagles here. The map says that this area burnt 40 years ago. Not much soil here for it to come back. They're bigger when there's more soil, but it's pretty harsh. The wind is intense. It's swirling all around. Sometimes it's in my face, sometimes at my back. Just blew my hat off, but I have the string around it, fortunately. I really hope I find camp soon. It's uh, it's after nine. Something's swimming over there. It must be a moose. Oh, 
awesome. I was wondering when the first big mammal of the trip would come. And it comes on day five, it's smooth rock. Perfect. I'm at the first campsite on my map, but it's still in the burn, so it won't work for a hammock. I'm starting to get concerned that that's going to be the case for quite a while. Holy. There's a big northwest wind coming in tonight, too, along with another thunderstorm, potentially, so I really have to be choosy about my sight, too. Makes the pickings even slimmer. Finally got leeward here. But it seems like everything is burnt. There are a couple of islands over here. I can see if any big trees survived there. A little dot there is Spaghetti Island. And it appears to be intact, not burned but it's so exposed. I think I, I can't go there. It would just be dangerous in a lightning storm. Deserts and forest fires, the bane of hammock campers. I could, if I had to, set up on the ground, but it would be not good in severe conditions. Like the tarp, I feel like wouldn't be that secure and keeping the bug net lifted off off my face, it would just be challenging. Finally found some trees that'll work on an island and it's not a super exposed one like the last so this will work. It's uh, 10.05. Bit of an awkward setup here but I'll take it. Alright, 10.58. Ready for bed. Skip dinner, just had a cliff bar, I'll, I'll have a good breakfast in the morning. And it's just starting to spit, so something could be coming on. Hopefully nothing too intense tonight. Just in the nick of time. Lucked out. Hopefully tomorrow I get out of the burn, get to Elf Lake. I've got the canoe turned over and tied down out there too in case something develops. Should be all good. Well, no storm, some rain, unless I slept through it, and some wind, but nothing crazy. Probably would have been fine on Spaghetti Island, but better safe than sorry. On the way before 7, got breakfast to go, granola with dried fruit and seeds and nuts, it's great. And a little paddle on Smooth Rock here before I head toward Elf Lake. Nasty headwind building already. So I'm really glad I got that distance in yesterday. Paddling up this lake would have been brutal. I'm at the first portage toward Elf Lake over here. From there I'll go to Lower Wapikimi and then back to Smooth Rock. All of this is Smooth Rock. Absolutely massive lake. On to Smoky Lake. Paddling right into the wind, but at least it's not a uh, a huge lake, it's long and skinny, but not nothing like smooth rock. Well that's the end of Smoky Lake. Really nice paddle. Trolled the whole way, about four or five kilometers and surprisingly nothing on a lake that you would assume gets next to no fishing pressure. The map said this was a steep one. Wasn't kidding. The path to Elf Lake is pretty magical. It's like a fairyland. These pitcher plants look otherworldly. Sometimes these isolated wetlands make me feel like I am in another world. And I love a place that makes me feel so beautifully lost.
short portage into Iris Lake. Looks like this dragonfly is just completing its metamorphosis, coming out of that nymph shell. I've watched it unfurl once, it was amazing. Iris is a gem. It's very tempting to camp here, it's only lunch. But after yesterday's long day and this headwind, I'm contemplating calling it a day early, a half rest day. I'll check out the campsite. Really cool site. Terrible water access. It's a real hike down to the water and steep and rocky, so it's not the one. Nice view to check out though. Checking out another option for a campsite, the west end of the lake. Epic jumping rock here if you wanted to die. And a nice view, but still really tough water access. Guess I'm going to Elf Lake. Really odd spider. I've never seen one like that. It's like neon yellow. Just quick lunch here before the last portage into Elf Lake. Some fuel, some water, filtered it, and then I'll set up camp. Call it a day. I'm pretty tired from yesterday. Taking the barrel and canoe separately this time. Okay, there's the first half of the load. Elf Lake. Wow, it's pretty chopped up in here even. First campsite that looks good. First campsite period I think will be home for tonight. Fantastic. This is an easy choice. This is a beautiful site. It looks hardly used. Nice fire pit, amazing view, and lots of wind to keep the bugs off. Sold. And some souvenirs to boot. Perfect. This is my favorite campsite since night one for sure. There's just a perfect place for everything. Nice slit for the canoe, and a good place to swim here. It was another hot one. Everything I'm wearing, and I need a good rinse. And there couldn't be better conditions for drying. Oh, it's cold. Oh, that's good. Great afternoon here. It's only been a couple hours since it's dinner time. Got spinach and mushroom risotto there on the burner. Way too dangerous to have a fire here with the wind blowing. On shore, this is all lichen, it's bone dry, and it burns like gasoline, so. Come oh, on, this should be good. Great dinner. I really like that spinach and mushroom risotto. Here's some of that lichen. This is so flammable. I would demonstrate right now, but it's just a needless risk. But I pulled this out because it's right by the fire. I've been actually trying to destroy it a little bit close to the fire. Normally I'm, I'm gentle around it. I think it grows pretty slowly. I love a little cozy site like this, just a little point. I'm very happy here. Day six is winding down and I'm feeling really into the swing of the trip. Really looking forward to paddling down Elf Lake. It looks beautiful from here and up to Lower Wabakimi.
I mean, early rise, I'm gonna hit the hay soon. I'm still pretty zonked from last night and yesterday. Feel good though. This is peace. Absolute peace. Up at first light, I had a fire ready to light. Should be a good day for progress. Great breakfast this morning. Veggie burritos, coffee. Veggie burritos are tasting extra good. Maybe it's the mosquitoes that flew into it. But on a much more somber note, today is the end of an era. My purple platypus bag has officially started to leak. There's a little hole here in the side. Some scotch was lost, but more importantly, an old friend has been lost. I'll miss you, scotch breath. Now you go to the landfill, like your forefathers before you, or perhaps recycling, I'll have to check. You are so worn and old served me well and I will keep your cap head since it is the only part left of you that's any good. Rest in peace buddy. So my electrolyte bottle is now the scotch bottle. I'll pour it in there and I'll just use the reservoir for the filtering system as my reservoir. <laughs> on the go just for longer paddles. I like to carry some extra water because it's been so hot. Needs so much water to stay hydrated. <sighs> Mosquitoes are trying to bite my burrito. <laughs> Leaving camp, calm morning. Should be a great day. What do we have? Ooh. Some power. Whoa! Feisty. Holy. Not the longest pipe, but he's pretty stout. Not a bad one. Hands. Oh yeah, this is a thick hike, man. Woo wee! <laughs> Back up. <laughs> this fish, thank you. Look at that nasty stuff. Yikes. I've had some showers this morning, but that looks gnarly. Feels small. Yeah, a little walleye. Thank you. Another solid pipe. Thank you. Feels like it could be another pretty thick one. Just a wonderful paddle on Elf Lake this morning. Calm, now a late tailwind. Good fishing. Oh! Nice walleye. Look at 
Ah, this walleye, really nice. Just a very thick walleye. Tall. Not super long, but... Thank you, buddy. Sad to be portaging out of Elf Lake. That was amazing. Heading towards Otter Lake now. Otter Lake's looking real nice as well. It's a long skinny one with a dog ear, about five kilometers to the next portage. And then just one more portage into Lower Wabakimi. You had another beautiful lake. What can you say? Just love it. It's magical. It's so wild. Three items on the lunch menu today. One, some instant coffee. Two, a little electrolyte tablet. Three dehydrated Mexican quinoa. Great lunch stop there. I feel very invigorated. I sound like a broken record, but it is another hot one, close to 30 degrees Celsius. So that was good before the next portage. Took a couple of ibuprofen too to ease the wear and tear, but I'm feeling like a million bucks. Went through a bit of an old forest fire again. This one from 96, so about almost 30 years. And it's amazing, again, how little growth there's been with heavy competition and very little soil. That's my trail there, 300 meter portage, and then I'm looking for camp. Okay, Lower Wabakimi, here we come. Ah. Big thunder off in the distance just ahead. There's a thunderhead towering right above me. It's like looking up at a mountain. Really beautiful. Also a little scary. More thunder, more dramatic skies. What a scene. rain coming I can see it there really hope I can get a tarp up first got probably a couple kilometers left two or three Starting the rain right as I get this up, man. Some good luck. Felt like maybe hail at first. Just some time. Oh. Holy cow. That's nasty looking stuff. Always a great feeling to have camp set up. 
we're looking at something like that. little tea storm from under the tarp you gotta love it it was getting a little scary out there I was definitely nervous just about lightning or squalls or something wild but it's all good I said it before nature needs our respect weather demands it cheers the inaugural swig from the new scotch bottle I'm feeling like a million bucks. This is a wonderful day. Cloud nine, natural high. That that paddle was just a joy. From the moment I left camp, it was wonderful. My goodness. Holy cow. That one had to be right above me. Huge bolts of lightning and then immediate thunder. Maybe I shouldn't be saying I'm out of the park yet. Out of the woods. That's the expression. Just missed it again. <laughs> Holy cow, it's coming in at an angle here. I should have pitched the tarp lower. I'm gonna put my stuff away in the dry bag for now. Oh boy. Wow. Rain started driving down. I got this tarp on really low to put off the ground. right on top of me. It's instantaneous. Whoa. This is what I was afraid of. Wow, the rain just died. One of those waterfalls just dumped on us, on me. Just like that, the sun starts to come out. Keep this fairly low. That was thrill. That was thrill. That was a thrill. That was thrilling. That was pretty much my perfect day, and even the thunderstorm to cap it off, perfect. And all it needs is some pizza. I make up some non-calzones with all the fixings, my veggie mix, plus some dehydrated chanterelles. Ooh. And there's one <laughs> sad dehydrated morel from our yard, actually. We're lucky to get a couple each year. <laughs> we'll take them. All set for the final toasting and in the rehydration bucket there's a little bit of the juices left from the vegetables. I believe you could call this an au jus. I'm gonna drink it. That is a delicious broth. Look at that. Ooh, that's gonna be good. Presenting for the first time as man and calzones, Mr. John Terrio and the calzones. You may bite the calzones. Thank you, Reverend. It's fantastic.
course. Went dead calm after the last rainfall and the bugs are really thickening. I find it quite sickening. In fact, my heart rate seems to be quickening. And so I shall be chickening out into the hammock where the plot to my book is similarly thickening. Day seven antics. Just the norm, isn't it? It sure is. Day eight, packing up, I'm getting out of here. It's a bit of a bug hole. Breakfast on the go. Bugs were just too nasty at camp to even make this. I couldn't pour anything in here. The, the mosquitoes would just get in there and be a breakfast of mosquitoes. So. Here we go. Got some river travel today. Should be very scenic. Down, I'm not sure the name of it. I'm just gonna call it the Wabakimi River. Should be beautiful. At the first rapid, end of lower Wabakimi. Hopefully I can run something today. There's a fair amount of volume through here, but it looks clean enough. It's pretty beefy toward the bottom, but I'm going for it. A lot of volume here. No real obstructions. Looks like a nice run. Ledge here, though. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo -hoo! Yeah, it's a solid ledge right there. Never comes across on film, but there was a lot of power there. Oh, yeah. Gotta love saving a portage. Taking a lunch break here, having the rest of the Dal Palak. Most of the rest of the naan. I'll have one piece left after this and some cheese and that'll be all I have left that's perishable, which is good. Another nice one. Thank you. This one's staying down. Another nice walleye. Wow. Serious honey hole. Look at that. These are nice walleye. Here's an example of how high the water is. Look at these jack pines. Another one. Beautiful stretch here. Wish there were a campsite here. This is beautiful. River Forks, looks old, ancient. 
Really nice. Look at this guy. I just love a scene like this. All this growth on virtually bare rock. All these different colored mosses and bright green leaves and little spruce clinging to life on the slopes. Through the river, back on the Smooth Rock Lake. I'm excited for that. It was pretty amazing when I got here last time. Aside from searching for a campsite near dark, there were eagles everywhere, the moose. Who knows what else I'll see. We had a lot of ground, a lot more ground to cover on Smooth Rock this time. Something's swimming up there. Smooth rock? What a safari! Black bear immediately. Nice camp for night number eight. Got everything done that I need to. Canoes turned over and tied down, water's filtered. Rebuilt the fire pit a bit. Got some firewood and hammock set up back there. Perfect. Had a couple of ibuprofen too, and that helps a lot. My hands are just raw from the grip on the paddle. You're not supposed to grip the double blade too tightly. You're supposed to keep a loose grip. And I try to, but still, just wear and tear. I've never read Farley Moat before somehow, and I've heard that some of his tales may be a bit exaggerated, but anyway, I'm, I don't know if that's true, but I'm loving this. It's really witty, brilliant writing style, and in it he's studying wolves for the government who think that they're destroying caribou populations. However, they've lived with the caribou for eons, so that doesn't make sense. But anyway, public outcry makes them commission this study, and Farley Mowat goes to do it, and he's up in like northern Saskatchewan or Manitoba, and the mosquitoes there are insane. And he concludes that the only bloodthirsty killers in that area are the mosquitoes, not the wolves. He also smuggles in some cases of beer in the canoe on the float plane that takes him into where he studies the wolves. And he uses the high proof grain alcohol that was supposed to be used to preserve specimens to drink and he mixes it with the beer and calls it wolf juice. And here he says, when I emerged from my session with the wolf juice, the following morning I was somewhat worse for wear in a physical sense, but I was cleansed and purified spiritually. And that's quite fitting for my new scotch bottle, which I will probably now call wolf juice. So today was not a big day for distance. I'm now up there, Smooth Rock Lake. That's all Smooth Rock. Came over from Lower Wabakimi, down this river stretch. So, didn't get too far, but I've got a beautiful stretch ahead. 20 plus kilometers across Smooth Rock. Then I'll get to the Caribou River, and there are four portages through there. And then another huge lake, Caribou Lake. And I can either come down here and get picked up there, or go down Little Caribou Lake, which I think has one or two portages. But Pretty sweet paddling ahead. Day nine, 
It's supposed to be quite a bit of rain this morning and with the lightning and thunder I'm going to sit tight for a bit, rest up, hopefully start later today. And it is really coming down. Thirty and the sun just broke through. Got a break in the rain, thunder, so I'm gonna make a break for it. Needed some extra rest anyway. Feel a lot better after getting some. So it wasn't a waste of a morning. But I'm gonna get going. Back on the water again with lunch. It's starting to rain again, but at least I got a little break to pack up and make some food, make some progress. Yesterday I guessed that I had 20 kilometers to cover across smooth rock. Measured it last night on the app on my phone, Venza Maps, and it's actually 30 kilometers based on my route. Now that's 30 kilometers without portaging, so I'm pretty happy about it. Really cool paddling through this burn. It's much more recent than the other ones that I saw. This one's maybe five years. And the jack pine are coming back strong here. Look at those clouds over there. Yeah, we won't net that. Just let them go here. Thank you. Gotta love single barbless. Quarter after eight. Hoping this island's gonna be home for tonight. Check out this feast. Two black bean burgers with hash browns. Mmm. That's good. That's it for day nine. Tomorrow, continue on Smooth Rock Lake. Maybe get into the Caribou River. And then there's another giant caribou lake after that. That's it. Fair ways to go yet though. And it's, a, it's an antihistamine kind of night. It's usually conk me out too. Just killed the hundred or so that snuck in with me, like they do every time I get in or out. And they are angry out there. Sound like a, a hive, of, I disturbed a hive of bees or something and they're swarming angrily. And I'm lying here in a t-shirt, no pants. And it is a privilege to not be attacked. Oh, it's a comfort. Day 10. Wind pounded the tarp all night. Just really rose up as soon as I got to bed and didn't stop. So it was a long night and a short sleep. Uh, but uh, it's getting light out now. It's close to 5 a.m. And we can get going. Humongous 
bucket of penne this morning. With some chanterelle mushrooms and then my veggie mix. Parmesan, sriracha, many mosquitoes that flew into it. On the water before seven. Should make good progress today. Bit of a rainbow over there, just the base of it. There was one on the other side too this morning. Interesting. Got about a two kilometer open water crossing here. Get me over to Caribou Bay. It's the ones that have got me that I want to kill the most, even though they're done with me. Won't bother me again. I can't let them win. I try not to dwell on the bugs, but they're a big part of the experience right now at this time of year. It's just the fact. And it leads to fantasizing about how I could get my revenge. I thought of, like if I could ask for any superpower to have little lasers that just shoot out and destroy every single one of them. That'd be amazing. I've thought about using the bear spray on them. Not actually, but it'd be very satisfying. A flamethrower. odd fish here in Caribou Bay. Otherwise, it's been a pretty long, uneventful paddle. Thank you. Stopped on a really nice campsite here for a little coffee and quick lunch before some portages nearly at the Caribou River. Coffee will be extra good today because it's actually quite cool. The high is 17 degrees Celsius. But that's welcome, it's a, it's a nice change. Well, just like that, I'm through Smooth Rock and Funger Lake here, a smaller lake before the Caribou River. Got four carries, but first carries in 48 hours, so that's pretty good. And then I'm into Caribou Lake, which might be even bigger than Smooth Rock, comparable anyway. Another example of how high the water is here. This portage is just a side flow to the river right now. Last portage. Turned into a pretty nasty day on not a lot of sleep, but making great progress thanks to this tailwind. It's a cold north wind too. It's tempting to just pull over, put up the tarp and get in the hammock in my sleeping bag finish up my book, but I'm too, I'm, I gotta take advantage of this tailwind, it's too good. Be nuts. Alright. It's opening up into Caribou Lake here, and I should be able to get out tomorrow. This is kind of the perfect way to end a trip in some ways. I'm cold, I'm soaked, I'm tired, I'm hungry. Well, I'll just chug some peanuts, so I'm okay. My bug bit to heck, and my hands feel like they have arthritis. They're just really, really sore and stiff. And I get to go home to Aaron, have a shower, There'll probably be Doritos waiting for me, watch TV and just be in a warm house. <laughs> a day like today makes it a lot easier to go home. It's kind of nice. This little site's gonna be home for tonight. 
nice and sheltered. There are a few better feelings in the world to me than getting somewhere warm and dry and sheltered after being out in the cold hard rain. I'm so content right now, there's nothing else I need. I could go without dinner and be happy. It was surprisingly cold out there. I got into camp with quite a shiver. I've got some wolf juice left for extra warmth. And I've got about 20 kilometers left tomorrow on Caribou Lake and Little Caribou. End the trip there, meet Wabukimi Outfitters. They'll bring my car to the alternate access point there. And that'll be that. Just finished the book, which I really enjoyed, and it's a great reminder of how humans, governments, interfere with nature and try to blame nature for problems that we cause. And it makes me so grateful that we have parks, big parks in Canada like Wabukimi here, where nature gets to exist as it should, for better or for worse, through the lows and highs. It finds balance. Day 11, coolest morning of the trip, four degrees. This fire is gonna feel really nice. Gorgeous final morning here in Wabakimi. Well, actually I'm just outside the border now, back on public land. Should be a great final day. Not out yet, still got a little ways to go. 20 kilometers. For breakfast this morning, I'm doing something I'm calling a burrito casserole. It's kind of the odds and ends left that I want to use up. A lot of food left, but some little bits of things. A bit of dehydrated burrito mix, a bit of this aged cheddar, aged 11 days in a pristine environment. A bit of veggie curry in there, and a bit of hash brown, and a couple of wraps over there. Because when you get home, Suddenly, this 11 day cheese seems disgusting and you want to throw it out. Why throw it out when I can use it right now? Mix that in there, maybe boil it a little. Burrito casserole. Oh, follow me for more recipes. Now for the plating. Notice that I've garnished the dish with this blueberry shrub. Very nice. Grilling the burrito is essential. You want to lock in those casserole flavors. I want this burrito to scream, I'm ready. Here you are, monsieur. Thank you, garçon. How is everything, sir? Just like mom used to make. My compliments to the chef. Pretty good. Leaving camp. I'm beautifully calm here on the leeward side of this island. Time to go out on the big caribou. Yeah, it's a much different story out here, but manageable. Bruce at Wabakimi Outfitters, he suggested that I stick with little caribou today for my out point. I was tempted to just take caribou because I'd have no portage, but he was right benefit of using an outfitter so thanks to Wabakimi Outfitters and Bruce put me on an awesome route
30 something portages on this route and I'm approaching the last one into Little Caribou Lake and the final 10 kilometers of the trip. Looking back on this trip, it was another one to remember. It was special right from the start with pictographs on a challenging day of paddling into that tough headwind. Pushed through it and got to that cozy campsite across from the cliffs. That was my favorite site of the whole trip actually. The morning paddle there was something else. Then came the waterfalls, the Seven Sisters. The portaging was strenuous, but I'm so glad I got to see that stretch of river, and I know I'll be back someday to see the rest of the Kopka, one of the most scenic places I've paddled. After the Kopka, there was that Cranland connection that brought me into an unnamed lake, and that was a true bug hole. Got the first of several thunderstorms there too, followed by a fish fry on Boulder Lake, and a really peaceful night there. Day four, day four brought the heat. Felt like 40 degrees Celsius and it was stifling. There were some severe thunderstorms that night too, and the wind was intense. The Lookout River was beautiful with some solid walleye fishing and just a little white water. And that led to massive Smooth Rock Lake, which was the highlight of the trip for wildlife. Eagle after eagle, and a cow moose that evening. That was a late evening, because it was a struggle to find a site in that old forest fire. Day six took me west toward Elf Lake, and that was straight out of a fairy tale with those long skinny lakes and isolated wetlands. The next day on Elf Lake was probably the best of the trip. Terrific fishing and scenery through that section toward Lower Wabakimi Lake. And the sky that day looked more and more threatening until it exploded into that thrilling electrical storm. And that capped off a perfect day for me. Some more whitewater, walleye, and waterfalls took me back into Smooth Rock at the west end of the lake. And again, Smooth Rock delivered the wildlife with the black bear right away before I set up camp that night. In all honesty, the bugs broke me a bit there. They could always be worse, but they were bad, there's no question about that. Bruce at Wabakimi Outfitters told me they were the worst in memory. Then a full day of paddling with some rain and another burn led to an island campsite where there was perhaps the best sunrise or sunset of the trip. Day 10 through Caribou Bay and up the Caribou River turned pretty nasty with driving rain, temperatures in the single digits, but I made last night's cozy and sheltered camp feel that much sweeter. And to close off the last 20 kilometers of my first Wabakimi experience, a beautiful misty morning today over island studied Caribou Lake. What a trip, and I've only scratched the surface of Wabakimi. I know I'll be back for more.